right, so mortgage rates. Mortgage rates have uh, been kind of increased one full percent. So what does that mean for us between you know our buyers and our sellers here? How, what, how does that affect us in the reality? Well, yeah, so the reality is everything's gone up by that 1%, and no one saw that coming. I mean, even the, the best bank economists out there with uh, be it Scotia or CIBC were predicting, you know, they were they were upset already at the 0.75 potential, and then it went up by one, and it just caught everybody off guard. So anybody, um, you know, as an example, that has a mortgage or a line of credit, um, that rate has now gone up a full percent. So if you were at, you know, 3.7, which was what it was before, minus five, you're, you know, you're paying 3.2% interest. Now it's gone up by 1%. So you're at 4.7 uh, minus five or minus six, whatever it might be. So if you're at 4.7 minus five, uh, you're at 4.2, right? So that's what you're paying for, for, for the time being. Um, this is not, and I try to explain this to a lot of people, this is not set in stone. Like this is not going to stay this way. It may stay for a while, maybe till October or, you know, if they decide to keep it as it is, but with the variable product, whether it's, a, whether it's a, any sort of lending, mortgage related and or line of credit, it's eventually going to go back down. Right. So there, I'm reading a bunch of articles from this morning saying how the Bank of Canada and a lot of banks are front loading the interest hikes that were going to happen later on. So they're just doing it now to sort of offset everything. Can't say I agree uh, with how they've done this because, you know, we're trying to stimulate the economy, not stop it. But inflation is what it is. But in general, you, you know, payments will be going up uh, for anyone in a, in a variable product line of credit or mortgage related. Uh, depending on the amount that you have. It's, it's usually about $12 for every 100,000, um, but now it's 1%, so it's gonna be like 50 bucks per 100,000, right? So it, the, the math is kind of challenging to do. It's, it's, it's a case by case basis, uh, but yeah, uh, people's uh, payments are gonna be going up if they're in a variable product. If they're in a fixed, you got nothing to worry about. You're, you're, this does not affect you whatsoever. You are in a fixed product. Uh, you're not, nothing is changing. No loans, no mortgages will be changing. Whatever you've signed on for, for that term, you're staying as is. Now, as far as I know that you've posted this, then it's to people's comfortability since we're talking about the variable and fixed. Um, and in your opinion, uh, from, you know, when you put me into my stuff as well, we went with a variable because over the long run, because we're looking at a very short, uh, you know, um, time frame that we're looking at it over the long run, you do actually save on a variable. Is that correct? Hundred percent, hundred percent. All my mortgages and loans are variable. My HELOCs are variable, and I will not be locking in anything. Uh, I've gone through this before, uh, third time I think now, and I've seen it many, many times. Where over the term of whatever loan I have, let's say it's a five-year mortgage. Over the term, the variable will always trend lower than if I, if I signed up on a fixed, right? The only time, Michael, uh, and everyone tuned in that I'll recommend you sign on to a fixed uh, is if it's in the low twos or high ones, okay? But, and there's a massive but with this one here, if you do decide to do that, you have to make sure you do not break that mortgage five-year term as an example because the penalty will be likely depending on the bank lender of course but it will be high right because you're getting a discount on the posted rate and you're agreeing to stay for five years now the other stat that most people don't know about michael is two out of three five-year fixed mortgages are broken in year three wow so i mean okay. every two out of three are actually selling breaking their mortgage selling their house so they're not committing to that five years life, life changes right yeah. buying selling divorce, death in the family, uh, refinancing. They just did their backyard. They want to get a pool. They want to uh, you know, do the basement. They want to do the windows, the roof. They don't realize, oh, I've done all this. Now I want to, you know, I, I put it all on my credit card at 19.99%. Now I want to consolidate this into a mortgage. Well, now you just broke your mortgage, right? People moving and selling, right? Um, I, you and I have had this discussion a million times. We don't know what we're doing in the next five years. Yeah. We might know what we're doing in the next year, if that, because life changes, right? Look at the yeah. pandemic as an example. So to lock yourself into something for five years, that's a very long time. And Canadians are very conservative. They want to they want to know what their payment is, right? Um, and there's different ways of getting a variable, Michael, where you can set your payment. You can set your payment, and if the rate goes up, then it's going more towards interest. If it goes down, now you're hammering down on your principal, which is what you want to do, right? Yeah. So, um, and then lastly, so what does this mean for our buyers? So the buyers that we have that are looking. 
How does this change? It, were they locked into a rate before? Should they get locked in now? What do you suggest for the buyers that are now looking? Because there's some great deals happening out there. Yes, interest rates have gone up, but now you know it's all relative. The prices have gone down significantly. So what is our best strategy for our buyers right now? Well, for, for anyone that ever asks me, do you have a realtor? I just get them to contact you because you know far more than me when it comes to the housing prices. But what I know is when the rates go up, housing sort of, sort of comes to a bit of a, I'm not a standstill, but a slowdown. Like now the property values aren't as high because not everyone is excited to move now because now if they do move and they get a large mortgage, as an example, the interest rate is going to be higher. Um, so to answer that question a bunch of different ways. One way is let's say you've, you're doing a mortgage right now and you're, you're, you signed on your commitment. It was 3.7 minus five. So you signed up 3.2. Okay. Really 3.7 minus five uh, or 0.5 is 3.2. Okay. But by the time you close now, let's say you're closing in August or you're closing in September. Well, the variable rates gone up. So they'll sorry, the lending rates gone up. So you're no longer 3.7 minus 5, which is what you signed. You're going to be closing at 4.7 minus 5, which is 4.2. So whatever you signed now, that's going to go up. Okay. Now, if you sign for a fixed mortgage, 4.9, 5.1, 4.7, that's going to stay. Okay. Uh, and of course, if you have a good mortgage broker and the rate goes down after you signed it, you do have the opportunity one time to contact your lender or, or your mortgage broker has the right to contact the lender to get the lower rate. But a fixed, if the fixed goes up and you've already signed, you, you, you know, you're not, you don't have to worry about anything. You've already signed the fixed rate. So there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to that. Uh, and, and the same thing is if you've got a, a HELOC or a, a home equity line of credit or just a, even a secured line of credit, it all depends. Whatever you signed for will now change likely by August 1st because the prime rate has gone up. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Joe. And uh, so those who don't know, Joe is a mortgage broker. Joe, where can they reach you? What's your contact info? Uh, I'm sure some of you that are watching this that are, are getting this email are already contacted Joe or know who Joe is. But those who don't, Joe, where can they find you? Uh, website's joeferraro.ca. Uh, you can reach me by that medium there. You can also email me. The easiest email would be joe at joeferraro.ca. I'm a licensed uh, broker agent uh, with Sherwood Mortgage Group. So my reply will be from my Sherwood Mortgage Group email address. Uh, for those that want to write it down, it's jferraro at sherwoodmortgagegroup.com. But for easy purposes, just check out my email. And of course, all the social media platforms, uh, Joe A. Ferraro on Instagram. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, obviously, Joe Ferraro, um, uh, Facebook and whatnot. So I'll I'm everywhere. TikTok. I started a TikTok, Michael. So I'm fun with that. <laughs> trying go. to be young. I'm failing miserably with my son, but uh, we're having a good time. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for your time, Joe. I appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Take care.